Hey everybody, welcome to another Foosh video review. This time we're taking a look at Transformers Generations Thrilling 30 Roadbuster. Roadbuster is a character many Wreckers fans have been waiting for for a long time. There have been several third party figures that have been released over the years, but finally Hasbro has gotten around to delivering their own version of Roadbuster. So let's take a look and see what this guy has to offer. First of all, he's rather plain right now. He comes with a sheet of stickers that I have not applied yet. Um, I can't decide what I want to do with them. I know I'm going to end up putting a Wrecker sticker on his chest, but I, I had all the stickers for Whirl, and I applied them all, and I don't really feel like they did a lot for him in terms of his appearance, so I don't know if I'm going to bother going through the trouble with all of Roadbuster stickers. I think I'm just going to slap on one of my Repro Labels silver-backed Wrecker stickers here so he matches my other Wreckers and call it a day. Now, something you might notice right off the bat here is the way I have his feet configured. Now, his feet are kind of awful, and the way they're supposed to be positioned, the way it shows in all the box on the promo images, like this, they look like gigantic clown feet. And I really, really, really don't like them. I can't stress that enough. I Look at these. They're just ginormous clodhoppers. But I found that if I just flip them around like this, that they're a little bit um, less abusive to the eye, I guess. The huge feet are hidden. They look like little, little small pegs now. And... The huge Ronald McDonald foot is kind of like acting like as a stabilizer. And I find I can deal with that much better than the, than the way he's quote-unquote supposed to be. I mean, if we look at uh, his box packaging, let's move him to the side here for a second. You can see that, yeah, that's how his feet are supposed to be configured, and that's just not going to happen with mine. I mean, that was almost a deal breaker. I almost didn't get him because of those feet. But... Fortunately, they can be flipped, and he stands just as well, just like this, so that is a-okay. Now, he also comes packing a whole lot of weaponry. He's got this rifle here. There's a shoulder-mounted cannon that does fire a rocket. Let's see if I can get that to happen. Ooh, you didn't even see it because it's black, but just take my word for it that it was epic. Let's see if we can shoot it this way. Yay! Again, spring-loaded, and I have no idea where that went. Oh, here it is. Spring-loaded, and there is some power behind it. And it, it can turn, it can raise and lower. So that's pretty cool. And then this contraption here, I don't even know what to make of it. It just seems like a whole bunch of gun parts just tacked on. Like, all this stuff can be removed and changed around and configured in different ways. But this is just how I chose it. I think it looks kind of neat as a big elaborate shoulder thing. And then this guy can also be removed and repositioned. So I mean he's versatile. There's a lot of options in terms of how you display all his weapons. And everything he comes with can be attached to him. So there's no loose parts laying around to contend with. In terms of articulation, he's got good range of motion in his shoulders. They can flip around. He's got double elbows, which is unusual for a Transformers figure. So he can get in this, like, you know, cool poses like this. Unfortunately, these tires are just kind of there. You can't really put them away or anything. They don't fold away. I mean, his head mostly spins. It raises and lowers a little bit. Um, there's no wrist swivel. And his legs don't have the greatest range of motion. They can't move forward all that much. There's not a lot of clearance for his orange armor and this green belt contraption. But his knees have a nice range of motion too. I mean, it is possible to pose him. His ankles have some movement, so he can get into some action poses. It is possible. I mean, that's random and just off the top of my head, but that's kind of neat. So not the best range of motion in his legs. And the way his wheels are, the way they get folded away in his bot mode, they get in each other's way, so he's constantly in this kind of spread leg hero stance, like, a, like, like he's Superman or something. Now, in terms of size, 
he is a, a Voyager class figure, and he's about the same exact size as Springer. And they look kind of good together. Now, unfortunately, I mean, often in the comics, Roadbuster is depicted as being this just humongous, hulking figure, much larger than Springer. So, I mean, aside from the possibility of ever getting an ultra-class Roadbuster, I think this is as good as we're ever going to get. And at least he's a good-sized Voyager. So, I mean, he, he works on my shelf. I, I can live with it. I don't know how much money I'd be willing to invest in a larger Roadbuster. And that's, I mean, he's such a, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a fan of the Wreckers, and I'm really happy to have a Roadbuster character, but I was never going to invest more than what Hasbro was asking for a Voyager. Like, I know there's a fans project version and whatnot, but there was no way that was ever going to happen. He's just, he's just not essential enough to me. But I like him. I had the G1 character as a kid, and I really liked it too. So, I am happy to have this Hasbro figure. So, let's take a look at his transformation now. It's a very, it's a surprisingly simple transformation. And the first thing we can do is get rid of the weapons. We can put those to the side for now. I'm gonna change the, ca <clears throat> change the camera angle a little bit so I'm not just dangling his feet in the frame. So what we can do is flip up a chest piece. So his head is still visible under there, and we've almost got part of the vehicle already. And then on the front here, these pieces flip down. And then his arms, this whole portion right here, has to flip down and in there like that. And then his it's not cooperating. His arms kind of collapse up like this. And then there's a peg right here that pegs into the orange space. And that's that. So once again, this shifts down. His arm collapses up. And then those pieces lock in. And there, we have half the truck already. And then for his back portion, the wheels flip up. His feet kind of do one of these. And then they basically, the whole bottom portion kind of locks together. So we have something like that. And then that whole thing just flips up and around. At least it's supposed to, but of course it's not cooperating. Oops, and his arms came out of place because of course they did. Okay, and there we have it. There is his vehicle mode. And it looks kind of cool. It's it's nice and streamlined. It doesn't look like a, a jigsaw puzzle mess like some Transformers tend to. It has a good range of motion in the wheels. I mean, it looks like Roadbuster's classic vehicle mode. And when we flip it up, I mean, we can see his face under there. But there isn't, like, a complete robot body there smiling down at us. And then his weapons can be attached... You know, there's holes all over the place where his weapons can be attached. So we can turn this into a, you know, some kind of tank, basically. I'm just doing this really quick just to get everything attached, but I think you get the idea. There we go. And it's just a rolling assault vehicle now. That's his alt mode. So let's get him back into his robot mode then. And fortunately, it's just as simple. Detach all the weapons first, and then we can flip his legs down. Let me get the 
this position here. Split that around and then configure his feet however you're going to configure them, clown shoes or otherwise. Free his arms and then get that piece to flip up. Flip these things down and then flip that around and lock it in place. And there we have his robot mode sends any weapons for now. Okay. So that's his robot mode and let's get a close-up of his face. I don't think we've done that yet. And he's got a really cool head sculpt. I really like it a lot. It's kind of see here. It's it's very kind of cold and very kind of, you know, robotic looking. And it looks a lot like the original G1 head sculpt. There's not a lot of emotion coming from that head. I kind of like that. And it's it's it suits a wrecker, I think. He's like the muscle of the group, or at least that's how he appears. Now let's get a look at him from all angles here. It's a pretty solid bot mode. There's not a lot of kibble. I mean, there's some annoying kibble, like, you know, the wheels down here, because they do get in each other's way. But that's about it, and the wheels on his forearms, of course. And it just looks weird with his feet turned back like that, but functionally and aesthetically, that's just better. So that's how they're going to stay. So that is Roadbuster's robot mode once again. So let's get his weapons back in place here. And again, any configuration will do, but I'm kind of stuck in the, the first configuration. I found I'm kind of attached to it. I'm just used to seeing him that way on the shelf. And some of these peg holes are on the tight side. Ah, I'm going to lose that missile forever one of these days. I know it. Oh, I found it. And there we go. There's Roadbuster all decked out, all armored up. All ready for action with the Wreckers. So... Again, that, this is Hasbro's Transformers Generations Roadbuster. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Let us know what you think of him. He should be hitting stores any time now. I think there have been some sightings in California. I got mine along with Cybershark. Or Cybershark. With um, Skybite, who looks like Cybershark. I got mine from Big Bad Toy Store about a week ago. So, I mean, he's starting to pop up. If you can just wade through all the movie toys that are out right now, maybe you could find one at your own local shops. So keep looking. All right, so leave a comment below, subscribe to the Foosh, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.